everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. And this is your tip of the week. And I'm gonna give you some tips on what kind of quilt to start with for those of you who are a beginner. I'm also gonna give you a few tips on cutting your fabric and a few more tips on sashing. So let's get started. If you've been wanting to get into quilting, I recommend you start with a quilt type that's called quilt as you go. And that's what this is right here. It's just squares that are stitched together. Usually in quilting, you stitch all your quilt blocks together and then you either add sashing to it and then you layer it and you do quilting stitches and then you put binding on it. And it's, it's a long process. Whereas quilt as you go is really simple. You start out with a square on top and I think these were maybe about eight inches. So you cut all your top squares eight inches. Then the squares that are on the back and that's here's the back. These are all squares stitched together. That's cut larger and I think it was about 10 inches. So then you layer it all. You put your big square on the bottom with a little bit of cotton batting and then your fabric for the top. You do a few basic quilting stitches and quilting stitches are stitches that hold all the layers together. And then you go through a process of attaching everything. And for a beginner, it's a really, really easy way to start out with. So the link to Quilt As You Go will be listed below your YouTube screen. In fact, all the quilts I'm gonna show you in here will be listed below your YouTube screen. You just scroll down to the description section, click on show more or the down arrow, and scroll down just a little bit more and you'll see all of the links. Okay, let's take a look at another one. This particular quilt has traditional quilt blocks on it. And I call this quilt my novice beginner's sampler quilt. In other words, if you wanna learn basic traditional quilt blocks, real simple ones, then you would wanna start with this. And this is a quilt series that I have. I think you learn six different blocks. You build two of them or stitch up two of them and just scatter them around the quilt. You also just use scrap fabric or fat quarters. You don't need to buy a lot of fabric. And it's one of these that you can just make it as you go along. And it doesn't matter what colors you use, you're just making a scrap quilt. Now I'm gonna show you some uh, parts of this that often confuse people, and that's called sashing. Sashing are these strips of fabric that are in between the blocks on the different rows and then in between the rows, you have sashing strips. And there's a certain process you go through to put these on. And traditionally, most sashing strips are two and a half inches wide. That doesn't mean that's what you have to do. I always tell people, it's your quilt, and you can cut it any size you want. But this is usually the, the typical size that people cut it. So I'm gonna go over how to cut some sashing strips, give you a few tips on that, and then I'll show you how to lay out the sashing strips. In order to cut your fabric in the correct way, I recommend you use a rotary cutter, rotary cutting a ruler, because that way you can get much better accuracy. If you try to draw lines and then cut with scissors, it's an extremely long, tedious process, and I really don't recommend it. So if you wanna get started in quilting, I recommend you use a 12 inch square ruler. Doesn't matter what brand, they all are basically the same. This is an Omni grid, but it doesn't matter. And then I also recommend this is real important too, a 24 inch long ruler, preferably six and a half to eight and a half inches. And this one is eight and a half inches. Much easier to control the ruler when they are long and wide. You'll also need a rotary cutter. This is a 60 millimeter. This is the 45 millimeter. This is the size of the blade. Now the 60 millimeter blades are very expensive, 
but they do last a little longer because you have more surface area on the edge of the blade. These, they're still fine, they cut great, but you might have a little bit shorter lifespan. Another thing people ask me a lot, what kind of mat do you use? I just use that inexpensive mat, I think it's made by Sullivan's, the Joanne Fabrics and Crafts sells, and I make sure if you're gonna go there and buy one, use a 50% off coupon. And that's what I've got on here, and I don't find that my blades last any longer or shorter, whether you're using the really high-end mat versus this mat. Another thing that it has nothing to do with cutting, but I use these really long pins. It's much easier to piece and hold everything together if you have longer pins. Most quilting fabric is anywhere between 42 and 44 inches wide. Usually your higher end quilting fabric is 44 inches wide. One of the things you want to make sure that you do before you cut into it, you need to decide, am I going to wash it or not? Uh, there are some people that are very uh, strict, they have to wash it. I myself, I don't because I found there's really hasn't, I haven't had any problems with severe shrinkage. So I don't wash mine, but yes, you can. If you're going to wash them, make sure on the raw edges at both ends of your fabric, you do a zigzag stick, stitch so that it does not unravel during the wash cycle. So before you cut into it, you want to make sure it's pressed well so that all your fabric, you can cut it even, and then fold your fabric together with selvage ends together. Make sure your fabric is smooth. Now I'm going to take my folded edge up here and I'm going to place it on a line right here because I want to make sure my fabric is straight across. Then I want to cut this raw edge straight. So I'm going to have the raw edge pulled past one of the lines on the mat. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut this edge straight. So I'm going to line this ruler up and make sure you want to make sure it's lined up up here as well as down here. Okay, so you want to put the lines on your ruler on the, the lines on the mat. That's how you do it. And then go ahead and cut this edge straight. Now, one of the things you don't want to do when you're cutting quilting fabric is you don't want to move the fabric. You just lift the ruler up and move it over. Leave your fabric exactly where it is and place the line on your ruler on the two and a half inch mark. So I went over two and a half inches, lined it up up here, as well as down here. Real important, you want it lined up at both ends. And then you cut again. Now you want to, and always close your blade. All right, now you want to lift the ruler up again, don't move the fabric, move it over another two and a half inches and then do another cut. And you would just keep moving your ruler over till you have all the number of strips that you need. Now the number of strips you cut depends on how big your quilt is. Some of your sashing strips, you're gonna to need to leave them really long. But the strips of sashing that go in between each block in each of the rows needs to be cut to a specific size. So whatever the size of your quilt block is, is the size you cut the strip. So let's say your quilt block is 12 and a half inches, 10 and a half inches, eight and a half inches or whatever. That's the length you cut them. So I usually will stack at least two, sometimes three strips on top of each other because it's much quicker to do it this way. And I'm gonna cut the selvage ends off. So I'm gonna line it up 
and cut. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to cut out eight and a half inch strips. So I'm now going to go over eight and a half inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. Right in there. I'm going to place my ruler on there. Always take your time because you don't want to waste fabric. And cut. And you would keep moving over eight and a half inches. So out of this strip, these two strips, I can get eight two and a half inch wide strips. So the first thing you want to do is take one of your blocks and you're going to stitch on the sashing on the two opposite sides of each other. And you would stitch one quarter inch seam. And remember, in order for this quilt to come out balanced and even and not crooked, is to make sure your seam allowance is exactly the same and that you've cut everything exactly the same. So after you stitch, press on the back side, then unfold it and press again. And typically what I do is I will press my seam towards the sashing strips, especially in this case because the sashing is darker and when you press it towards the darker fabric, the seam uh, underneath does not show as much. So now you need to add your next block on. So you've already stitched these two on. Then you take your next block, bring it on top of the sashing strip, stitch it on, press, and again, press this seam towards the sashing. So when you're done stitching all of the blocks and sashing together in a row, you always want to end with a piece of sashing. So then at the very end of your row, no matter how many blocks you have, go ahead and stitch on your last piece of sashing, press it just like you did on the other pieces. So after you've done all of the rows, you've stitched the sashing in between all of your blocks, on each row. Then you want to stitch sashing on each side of the row. So you'd start at the top edge, place your sashing on top, and stitch it on. Remember, be really careful with your seam allowance. Press, and then again, press the seam towards the sashing. Now you'll notice that my sashing is longer than I need. I do that and then I trim it all off to be all the same length after I've got all of the rows stitched together. When you go to attach your second row, you want to make sure the blocks up here are in alignment with the blocks down here. So you want to make sure when you place this row here that everything is even. Sometimes you need to use a ruler and lay it there and make sure that it's laid out correctly. And then of course you would go ahead, bring it on top of each other, place pins, and you want to place pins right there at those uh, seams to make sure that the fabric stays going in the correct direction. After stitching, then press it on the back side, and then again, press it on top. When you're done with all of your rows being attached, remember to put one more row of sashing at the bottom edge. Now this is where your long ruler really comes in handy again. Now you want to trim the ends of your sashing off, and so you want to align your ruler on the edge of the sashing going this way. And once you've got it lined up and everything is straight, you always want to check and recheck. Then you want to go ahead and trim all of it off. So when you're done, it should look nice and clean around all of your edges. So again, I want to remind you, seam allowance is important. Cutting everything correct is important. And also, Pressing is very important. Pressing with an iron, not finger pressing. There's another type of sashing I'm not going to go over in this video. I might do it later again in another tip of the week. But you also have sashing with 
cornerstones in it. And this is a, takes longer to do, just a little more work, and you also have to be very, very careful how you line everything up. So if you think you're ready for cornerstones, I do have a tutorial on how to do the cornerstones with sashing into a quilt, and that link will also be listed below your YouTube screen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was informative and gave you a few useful tips that you can use. Now make sure you check below your YouTube screen for all those links and there'll also be other beginners sewing projects listed also. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.